All right. What is up, everyone? Welcome back to another Lure Lab here on the Serious Angler Network. As always, I am your host, the captain, Andrew Fall. We have a really cool episode for you guys today. We have the owner of Clutch Swimbait Company coming on, Josh Plates. And we're going to be diving into the four glide baits that he offers over at Clutch uh, Swimbait Company. We're going to talk about when to throw them, where to throw them, and the best conditions to get bites here coming into the shallow bite period so post spawn fish there's shad spawn going on in parts of the country right now we also have some pre-spawners that are moving up to spawn they'll eat glide baits up here in the northeast and probably even the upper midwest so we're going to dive into the four glide baits that clutch swim bait company offers we're going to chat here with a minute with josh when we bring them on and um just dive right in we know if you paid attention to the bassmaster elite on lake murray here this past weekend there there were some big fish caught by Patrick Walters, and I believe Trey McKinney also put a couple key fish in the boat for them. And the key one is Patrick with the win, if I remember correctly. I did a terrible job paying attention to the Elite Series event at Murray. But so I stopped rambling real quick. Anything that we talk about that is available on Omnia will be linked down below. And if you're new here on YouTube, please hit that subscribe button. And if you're on your favorite MP3 platform or podcast platform and it allows you to leave a review, please do so. And let's get Josh on here. Hey, Josh, how are you doing today? Doing good. How about yourself? Oh, we're surviving. My hands hurt. My face hurts because I've we talked a little bit offline and the viewers know I've been sick for about a month and a half now, but I've been catching a ton of smallmouth. And I know it makes a lot of people jealous that we live in an awesome place up here. But uh, yeah, how are, how are things down there? And where are you located, by the way? They're going great. Um, so I'm down in Kansas City. So uh, we're on the Missouri side. Uh, quick little jumps, give it a hop down to Lake of the Ozarks, Drew, yeah. Table Rock, all that stuff. That's kind of the lakes that, that I fish a lot. Uh, yeah. definitely jealous of you guys and your small mouth up there like i see pictures all the time and it's just the small mouth looks so much look like so much fun well if you ever want to take a break from making glide baits you're you're always welcome to come up for a few days if i have a gap in my schedule so i appreciate it yeah that's, we, we do have some big fish that will eat glide baits in new york state so that's that's awesome yeah <laughs> new, new york's one, always one of those bucket list states yeah. where it's like you see all all the uh videos and stuff of like the elites going to champlain and st lawrence river over the years and it's like man i, I really want to make it up there at some point for sure well it's funny they they go to like the big crown gems yeah. right of new york state but there's a lot of little lakes that aren't known about that to, in my opinion are just as good if not better on most days really? so yeah we have some we don't have a ton of lakes but the lakes that we have are extremely unreal like we have tannic color water we have mm -hmm. lakes that are probably like some of the white river mountain lakes like the ozarks yeah. and stuff that are like 60 70 foot of visibility and you can see a fish come track your bait from like 400 feet away it's yeah. just and then the next one you go over it's just all grass it it's wow. really it's a really diverse and very few reservoirs so they're all natural water so that's, that's cool yeah so but anyways you know we wanted to get you on here because I knew that the clutch uh, glide baits were going to be big, especially what the boss, right? And the OG and probably the eco was the big one last year, right? At Murray. Uh, so I remember the, correctly. The, the darter was the one the on darter. Murray last year that they really caught him on. The eco came out in January of this year. We released it at the East Tennessee Fishing yeah, Expo right. down in Knoxville. Uh, but yeah, I mean, it's. Yeah, the, the darters played a lot. The boss is finally starting to play a lot, which is all, like. When we were prototyping that thing, I, I always knew that that bait was going to be really special. And like me and a couple of buddies have just been catching the crap out of them on it for well over, I guess, well over two years now. Um, and it's just, we knew it was really good. And it's finally starting to catch on where it's like, hey, this thing's, this thing's pretty good. I think. Yeah. Yeah, it's kind of cool too. like my my partner and good friend Bailey on the Sirius Angler Network. He's yeah. kind of diving into like the glide bait rabbit hole. Right. And he's like, mm -hmm. he's like, they'll chew a nine inch swim bait in New York and he makes them eat it. And I'm like, yeah. man, I want to I'm so jealous of that bite. My issue is when I have free days, I end up graphing on Lake Erie for eight yeah. hours looking for yeah. new spots. So I don't get to go explore and throw it. I have a glide bait set up. I have a bunch of them just. 
I just never throw them, unfortunately. Yeah. And all I ever seem to catch are like 40. Well, a, a lot of people don't realize, like, oh, like a nine and three quarter inch bait, like the boss, like we catch a lot of small mouth on this thing on table. Oh, yeah. Like a lot. Um, and it's table it's, rock bass are gizzard shad eaters, right? Yeah. They, they love themselves some gizzard shad on table rock. But as long as those hooks are in the right spot, so like the, this this front hook and I really the back hook too have really like during the prototyping of the bait really had been everywhere. I had this one further forward, further back, this one further back, further forward. Like it, they landed on the perfect spot where you've got the optimal hookup ratio. Like we we did a lot of testing on that. We did a lot of testing on hooks. We tried bigger hooks, smaller hooks. Um, these are day in and day out the the hooks that are supposed to go on it in the right spot to optimize for hookup ratio. I love that. The R and D sounds like you guys spent a lot of time on every one of them. Yeah, your- I, there, there's a lot of companies out there that are quick to come out with a lot of baits really fast, and that's, I mean, I think we're slated to have three baits released this year, um, but that's we haven't released one for well over a year. So like, yeah. we've we've put a ton of time and research into it, like. There's there's a lot of baits behind the scenes that never make the cut. There's a lot of stuff that's like, man, we're so close to figuring out. We're just not there yet. Yeah. Uh, so that's yeah. cool. I'm I'm like every time I want to dive into it, I'm like oh, I gotta refrain myself because I'll spend all my guide earnings, which is I, yeah. I guide full time, right? Podcast and podcast on the side. But the reason that I want to bring you in, you know, we're in that special time of year where yeah. we depending on where you are in the country, you have pre post shad spawn bluegill eaters. So I kind of wanted to dive into like just overall shallow fishing glide baits. And I want to go through all four of your baits yeah. and it doesn't matter which order we go through, but like their specific purpose, like the size, the details and what makes them so special and where and when you would throw them. Gotcha. So I guess we can start with the OG, right? The first yeah. one I'm assuming. So, OG is the first bait that I, Came, or the, the first bait that I designed way back when, um, it was originally a hand carved bait. Uh, oh, that's cool. I come from a CAD design background. I don't know why I didn't start with CAD, but uh, started carving it. And it was, it's not the prettiest bait in the world, that's for sure. But, uh, and it's really been refined a lot over the years, but it's a choppy style bait. So it's got a really aggressive joint to it. Those so are the fun it, ones. I like it, choppy ones. Yeah. yeah. Uh, but so what, what a lot of people don't realize is if you weight a choppy bait correct, you can get a really good little soft swim out of it. So like it's it's easier to make a choppy bait have a little bit better of a, a like a like, an S, like a traditional S glide. Yeah, yeah. It's yeah. easier to have that or a choppy bait can do both if it's weighted correctly. A wide glide bait, which uh is that yeah, okay. I don't I don't really have one here. In front of me, um, should have grabbed a big bluegill, but uh, so that if that joint's like restricted just barely, it's really hard to make that bait into a really choppy, aggressive style bait. So, we kind of tend to design a little bit more towards that choppy bait and then weight it correctly so that way on that slow, steady retrieve, it's going to have a good slalom in the water. But uh, so the OG, uh, seven and three quarter inches long, um, weighs 3.1 ounces, uh, rotating hook hangers and everything. Um, it it's it's really good for fishing. I mean, everything that I make is pretty pretty well suited for fishing that shallow cover. But uh, it's that good kind of in between size of like the eco. The eco is tiny, so like that's the absolute bite getter. This has a ton of drawing power, but it's not overly big that it kind of deters from bites. So like it's that perfect happy medium where it's got all the drawing power in the world, but it's also got that they'll actually bite it. Um, and maybe not all, not all the drawing power in the world, like. The bigger you go, the more drawing power you have. So, like, that's going to pull this out of cover like crazy. Um, and that's something we kind of made for fun. It's, I think it's, I think it was 16 inches long, 24 ounces. Uh, <laughs> they will come out and school at this thing, but they won't bite it. Yeah. So they they want to follow it because they think it's mama. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> um, but that's going to pull them out of cover. And you can see everything out of, or anything that's sitting in any kind of cover with a bait that size. Now, the smaller you go, you're going to lose a lot of that drawing power, but they're going to be more apt to bite it. So it's kind of leaning more towards an actual like just bite getting like traditional like, okay, why are they biting a spinnerbait? Why are they biting a chatterbait? Because they think it's food and they're trying to eat it. So smaller glide baits kind of 
tend to lean more that direction, while the bigger you go, it starts having drawing power. So there's give and take there. And the OG is that good size where it's a little bit of the best of both worlds. Um, so that's the OG. I like uh, that. From, so I have a question yeah. for you when it comes to like designing it. You know, where the hinge is, right? Where you put yeah. the, the tail and the head, the body. When you're designing that, is it important to have that front head hinge more open or flat so that bait can do both the chop plus get that glide, beautiful yeah. S glide when you weight it properly? Like yeah, how so, important uh, is that? I don't have an aggressive joint on me here, but uh, so the more open and more flat it is, the more it's going to kick to the side. So you see that angle is like it's almost a 90 degree angle, like it's probably 80, 85 degrees right there. That's going to be the mark of a chopper. If it's only moving like that, very, very small, that thing's going to be a lot more of a wide glide bait. So basically, as that bait's coming through the water and it hits, and it hits that corner right there it can't really like kick out super like it it kind of sits at that angle until the force of the line gets to the point where it starts pulling it back the other way and it kind of creates a lot wider smoother of an angle if that makes sense yeah and if it's if it doesn't have that uh hard aggressive angle it cuts really easy and is allowed to shoot back the other way a lot faster so basically it's all about the corners and how smooth and aggressive that those corners are love it that's great so i don't like I, I kind of understand it a little bit, so that allows me to understand better. And I hope my viewers and our viewers here are yeah. getting a lot out of this. But I mean, I feel like there's so much technicality to glide bait fishing than just throwing it. Like there's, yeah. if you look it up, you can find people that modify them and show you how to modify like just ABS plastic ones. And yeah. your baits are all resin poured, correct? Yeah. So. so uh a lot of those videos that are talking about the modifying is making it so that there is more of an aggressive angle to it. Um, so the the thing with that, uh, every, every it's it's easy to assume based off those videos that, oh, you just want as sharp of an angle as possible. And that's not necessarily the case. There's a lot of times that that really restricted joint performs better in certain situations. Yeah. Uh, below 55 degree water, well, maybe not 55, maybe a little bit lower than that. 52, 53, I try to work it a little bit slower. So, like, I'm trying to have that more wide sweeping action. Like, I get out of the boss. The boss has a lot better wide slow action to it, and I fish that – I tend to fish that more in that lower 50-degree range. As we kind of get to that 55, 56, and up, mm -hmm. that's when the choppy-style baits start playing a lot more. Uh, does that make sense? Oh, absolutely. And then we can – We'll, we'll go even a step further. So all of my baits are designed to direct tie, like to be able to function based off the direct tie to the actual bait. Uh, we can make this bait act even snappier and choppier if we either put a split ring on the front or put a snap on the front. And I know there's there's some guys that like putting a snap swivel on the front uh, to prevent the line twist as it comes through the air. But basically, so the way to think about it, so if your line is tied directly to the line tie there, and fluorocarbon's got some rigidity to it, basically. So, it, like, it takes some effort for it to bend a little bit. Um, and especially the higher pound test, the more uh, restriction you have there. So, if you're throwing 20, 25 pound test, it's going to take a lot more force for that line to bend as opposed to if it's 12 or 15. It's going to be able to bend a lot uh, smoother. So, so, is that why a lot of people, real fast, I apologize, yeah, is that a lot of people will throw like a Berkeley Trilene big game when they're swim bait fishing because it's a little bit more subtle and soft? Uh, in, in my mind, the big game kind of leans more towards the stretch of the mono than yeah. the actual, uh, I mean, I I've, I'm not totally sure if the big game's more supple than a lot of fluorocarbons. It kind of makes sense that it would be, uh, just because the elasticity of mono, yeah. right? Like it, yeah. it's got a little bit more give to it. So when yep. you pull it, it might make that bait react just slightly. Yeah. So softer. in my mind, it acts like a, a rubber band basically. Yeah. So like, as you're working it, and I saw your alpha angler hat on, like the the, the wide glide, glide. Is the best rock group swim baits yeah. in my opinion. I love that. I've got yeah. three. I love that. Oh, that's fantastic. Um, I love Boomer. No, <laughs> uh, he, he just sent me a, a little bit beefier wide glide today for, for throwing the boss because I was oh, like, hey, sweet. I want something just a little bit heavier. And yeah, came in the mail that I can't wait to throw that thing. Heck yeah. But uh, but yeah, the uh, the stretch of the mono acts as a rubber band and almost shoots it a little bit better than a fluorocarbon and uh, way better than what Braid would because Braid doesn't have any stretch. Now, 
the interesting part about like the braid to mono braid to fluoro type thing is so the braid uh, diameter is smaller. So it's able to cut through the uh, water better. And plus it also kind of bends on itself a little bit more. So there is the case to be made there that it can help performance a little bit, but that stretch. So the problem is with braid is kind of comes to visibility and casting. Um, I hate casting braid. I throw a frog or something you cast it and it goes tunk middle of the air if you do that with a big like four or five ounce bait on a cast you will snap 50 60 pound braid on a cast like like it's nothing it just has no shock absorbency um but yeah kind of what we were talking about with with the heavier pound test um so as that bait's working through the water that line has to bend with it on the way back to the boat. So like as that bait's coming through the water, if it's trying to shoot this way, that lines has to circle around and be able to make that angle. So a direct tie is actually increasing the tightness of that line and restricting the motion just a little bit. Um, a split ring or a snap on there helps free that up and allows it to get around the corners a little bit faster. Now there are times where a direct tie like that and having a smoother action is going to get a lot more bites, especially if you're fishing a largemouth fishery. Do you ever but try you, like a loop knot? Do you, what was that? Do you ever tie like a loop knot? Uh, to I'm, mimic like a swivel or a snap ring. I'm not big on those. Uh, I, I just, I, I don't, I've had a couple fail on me in the past and I just, I'd rather tie my, the knot that I tie for everything. Yeah on either a snap or a split ring. So now is there a preferred snapper split ring that you would recommend to fish with your baits specifically? Yeah, so uh, pretty much the split rings that I throw on it. Uh, they're swim bait underground supply, uh, size fours, okay. size four for the bigger ones. If you're throwing an eco, a size three. The, the only issue with the size three is uh, the wire diameter for the split ring is 0.072. And when you're putting that split ring on there, it can tend to kind of, it can it can make that split ring have a little bit of memory where it doesn't fully close back on Got itself. It. So size four is going to be a little bit better because it, it's, it can have a little bit more flex without having that, without actually bending that wire. Yeah. If that makes sense. Makes sense. So you're, so you're not negating the strength of the split ring. You're allowing it to stay intact. Yeah. And the, uh, the thing that always worried me if I was running a smaller split ring would be like the line would literally slide underneath that, uh, that split ring and either hit that sharp point there on that split ring or just completely undo itself throughout yeah. the morning. You just cast your bait off and you just bring back a split ring. It makes but, sense. Uh, yeah. But I mean, then you're like, well, why don't you just go with a snap? And it's like, so the, my preferred snap is a decoy uh, egg snap. I think it's size three or four, I think uh i'd have to check my stuff uh yeah no worries yeah de a decoy egg snap but if you start opening it up changing baits a lot you can bend it out and i'm probably if you're gonna open it up two or three times and change baits probably cut it off and take the time to put a new yeah. one on yeah exactly i've, like I've bent those out on way too small a fish before <laughs> oh boy <laughs> I, I, I pushed that one a little far yeah, it happens. So which one do you want to go to next? Should, since you already mentioned the eco, should we dive right into the eco or do you want to talk about the boss uh, or the darter? We can, uh, let's, let's go in the progression that we've kind of released some stuff, I think. Okay. Uh, so yeah. Let's, let's go. Darter. Okay. So the second bait we ever came out with was the darter. Um, it's a herring profile, uh, which also, if I remember right, that's the same profile as like an alewife up north. Yeah, right? exactly. Yep. Um, so, originally designed around like the Lake Hartwells, the Lanier's, the uh, Murray's, um, where they have a lot of blueback herring in there. Lakes that have a lot of blueback herring, they like baits to be able to work, be worked super, super fast. So we are talking about the joint on uh, the OG. So again, very wide joint. And one thing you'll notice is that this joint is way back on this bait compared to most glide baits. That's hmm. for a very specific reason. So we're trying to decrease the drag of the tail as much as possible. Um, by decreasing the drag on the tail, it allows this head to get around a lot faster and carry a lot more, a lot more, more, lot more momentum in the, uh, water. So basically it allows it to shoot through the water and act super quick and erratic. Um, and this bait also has an internal buoyancy chamber to it. Um, it's actually a material that we have cast inside the actual bait that's close to the buoyancy of balsa. Um, oh, that's cool. basically like, it's more of a, it's, it's a material that has a lot higher buoyancy than we could ever achieve on resin. But uh, the, the downside to it is you can't, you can't have hardware in it. It'll just pull it straight out. So 
we cast it inside the actual bait so that way we can put more ballast in the bottom um and actually we, we've got about the same amount of ballast and a darter as we do a og and there's a lot more resin in an og um but that all that's just basically to say it stays super stable at really high rates of user input so you're chopping it like crazy like an eight to one to ten to one gear ratio just full turn right. half turn uh and it just cuts back and forth really really quick and it has those corners really really sharp um so that's the darter it's it was it was a lot to figure out and it's there's been several revisions since we've launched it but that bait's been killer on herring fisheries and alewife fisheries uh and in the summertime as well when um those largemouth kind of get post spawn so like kind of think of it as like a subsurface or a swim like a glide bait meets a uh like a spook like a top top water walking bait it's kind of a blend between those two where you're getting the reaction strike out of that like real quick movement yeah. but it's also got the drawing power of a glide bait um and how yeah. long is the darter like what's the size of the bait yeah so it's seven and a quarter where the og when it varies based on the tail um so the o, or the darter is seven and a quarter and then the og is seven and three quarter oh nice it's just it's substan it's a lot thinner it's a lot shorter uh it's just and both have, both have an aggressive chop to it but the herring is meant to basically be burned as to where the og glide is more of a chop bait like your traditional chop bait yeah yeah the, the og is going to have it's it's a slower bait it's not going to be as super snappy and aggressive um the corners are going to be a little bit softer on it or the darter is just very quick on those corners the darter sounds like it's more fun to fish uh it, at times it's really fun you get it you got a big long cast on it like a, i'm eight to one to 10 gear ratio and you're just and it's just shooting two foot or so on each side just getting it it's it's a really fun bait like i hope you have video footage of it but i'm sure you have some insane blows up like blow ups or eats from ozark bass just like oh, yeah. wet like <laughs> sharking like that glide bait down and just disappearing yeah. oh man that's so cool <laughs> <laughs> it's it's a, it's a fun bite um now my, my favorite bite is probably the boss though uh that's out of all the baits that i made uh or i've made like the boss is kind of my baby um the darter the darter was so justin kimmel who was working with the bass university at the time yeah. and i was talking with them about a giveaway at one point started talking with justin kimmel who's just local hammer on hartwell uh fishes those herring lake fisheries all the time and he was like man someone needs to have a really fast aggressive bait that's designed like a herring and that's why we started working on the darter and it's got that perfect herring shape to it oh, long yeah. slender yeah. yep uh yeah i mean in, in terms of like the ozarks and stuff there's not a herring for hundreds of miles i think that literally the closest herring lake is probably like smith lake in alabama or something. do you have threadfin in the ozarks we do have threadfin so um, i mean it's kind of similar just a smaller bait fish right yeah and that's that's kind of what the eco is a little bit more targeting is more of a thread fin. So like OG is a little bit of that happy medium between gizzard and thread fin. This is more thread fin. The boss, which we'll talk about in a bit, is uh, gizzard shad. And then we've got kind of our herring profile. Yeah, love it. And then we just dipped our toe in the water with bluegill stuff too. With the uh, oh boy, so so you don't have to say it, but I'm sure that might be something that's coming here in the near future. Oh, it's already out. Oh. Uh, it's, also, it's available on tackle warehouse it's actually a wake bait oh that's um, cool yep so that's it's a collaboration bait that we did with them uh i think it's been out for a week and a half maybe two weeks by now yeah. shows you um, how much i pay attention to the tackle warehouse website oh, wow. right <laughs> <laughs> paying attention to that omnia stuff yeah i'm always on omnia well like i don't know if you know like if you pay attention to omnia and their uh, premium pro membership that they have mm -hmm. like and you go in and they have all the different like lake temps and vegetation markers and weather yeah. apps like it's cool i find myself i'm on the lake just looking at that the whole time even when i'm yeah. like idling so it's hard for me to deviate and tech warehouse has some incredible products all these websites do it's just hard for me to leave the omnia oh yeah for yeah reason. <laughs> yeah i mean it's you you find that you find the site that you're jiving with the yeah. best and it kind of fits your needs the best and yeah. it's you don't really deviate outside of it i, I hear you or i buy stuff from japan yeah. a little yeah. too much so like but yeah so is, um anything else you want to touch on the darter real fast before we move on to the next one I, uh, it, it seems like it's a little bit more of a specific bait for specific it, areas but i'm sure it works all over the country 
it does work all over the country. Like there's been the, uh, there's been some bites on that thing on TVA that have been insane. Uh, it works on the Ozarks really well. You don't have to have herring or alewives in your bodies of water to be able to fish it and catch a lot of fish on it. Like yeah. after, once we start getting into that June, July time frame, like this, the daughter is always all, like, especially in bone like this is always on my deck. Yeah. Uh, I always have one tied on because like it just, they seem to really key in on that really fast, aggressive moving bite. And it's, it, like I said, it's, it's kind of like an underwater top or walk the dog style bait meets glide bait. Yeah. It's, that's too much fun. It's, it's a lot of fun. It's a really, really fun bait. Um, and it does, and it does some stuff that I feel like there's no other swim bait out there on the market that can do. Uh, and it's because of that internal buoyancy chamber and just, you don't find too many baits that are that profile that are that thin that work like this bait does. It, yeah. it defies a lot of things what people thought was possible with resin swim baits. Hopefully my wife doesn't watch this. I feel like when baits come into stock, I'm gonna go broke. Because <laughs> <laughs> now I need some. <laughs> it's all and, good. It, the, the darter is the most expensive bait we make. Yeah. Um, and it's because it does have that internal buoyancy chamber. It's very hard to work with a lot. It takes we can probably make four or five ecos to one one yeah. it's, it's crazy when you think about like the the custom lure building of a glide bait is that every one of them is just a little bit different yeah so awesome so which one do you want to move on to now the boss or well, the eco uh the next one that we came out with at that time was the boss uh okay this is like i said before this is kind of my baby um i i come from a big swim bait fishing background before i even started making swim baits so this is my baby uh nine and three quarter inches long it's quite a bit bigger than the darter as you can kind of see there it's oh, just yeah. it's it's for hunting those bigger fish uh so it's it's kind of built like it's that it's got a little bit tighter angle to it than like the og it so still gets really a little bit better yep. It kind of it's going to have a little bit more of that wide smooth action just a little bit better than uh the boss or the darter now the big thing with this bait so a lot of big baits like this um they're built kind of like a two by four just a block uh and this thing is super super thin i don't know if you can kind of see that really yeah, well. yeah but like it's 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 a very very th it's mirrored sorry uh, it's it's very thin compared to a lot of blockier style baits and that's for a very specific reason gizzard shad are not built like bricks they're very thin throughout their belly um and one thing that's super important especially while fishing these largemouth is like you want them to feel that that bait is real so like they see it it's a big bait that's just moving lazily up at the surface or just subsurface um but they want to feel that in their lateral line that that's a real fish. So like that really thin profile puts off that feeling in that uh, lateral line that they can feel. And they're like, all right, that's, that's feeling like a gizzard shad. It's looking like a gizzard shad. I might as well go bite it. Um, it's got a little divot right here. That it's really hard to tell. Well, I can see it. It's yeah. got a little bit of a divot right here. Uh, and that's for a very specific reason. As this bait's coming through the water, it, the way the water foils off that thing right there, almost provides just a slight shimmy in the water when it comes it's very very hard to see but it's just super super slight and i'm a big believer that secondary action is one of the biggest things that actually gets fish to commit yeah it's, it's like when you rest it and it as it's slowly falling it just slightly lifts and rocks back and forth uh not not as much that as much as it is when it's shooting out to the side yeah. it's got just okay. a slight quiver as it's moving Oh, um, but that secondary action is why we do the brush tail as well. So like as water flows over those bristles, it almost collapses down a little bit. And when you pop the bait out to the side to stop it, it flares just like what a gizzard shad does when it stops. So when a gizzard shad's moving through the water really fast, all their fins are compressed down. They're moving real quick. Their fins are compressed down. And when they stop, they just flare out. They, it's like they're putting on the brakes and, uh, brush tails really emulate that very very well um so yeah that the little quivers that's coming through the water um just everything about this bait is designed to really feel natural look natural and get those fish to react um so yeah. where would you throw the boss like the mo if you're going down a lake and you pick up the boss right your baby yeah. and you're like this is the prime spot to throw this bait where would you be throwing it? uh so it very much varies time of year. 
Um, but overall, if you're targeting like bluff ends, if you're targeting like look look for the spot, like the most obvious spot possible. Uh, like if you're fishing docks or grass or whatever, like a main lake point. Uh, I'm trying to trying to make it as broad as possible across the board. So whether you're on Gunnersville or whether you're on Table Rock, you're still able to kind of figure it out. But like you look at you look at your mapping and you're like, I bet there's one there. That's the place to start throwing. Yeah. And uh, the way the way it comes weighted is a slow a slow sink um, for fishing rather shallow. Um, but the boss is becoming probably like my my number one live scope bait. So we'll just wrap some uh, lead around that front hook hanger. If you really want to make it fall fast, do quite a bit of lead here and just a little bit here. You definitely don't want to add too much lead to the back. Otherwise, it'll kind of start doing that, and then it starts not necessarily swimming right. So we'll add lead there, and we'll fish it over brush piles a ton. You bring this three, four foot above a brush pile, and you're going to see what lives in that brush pile. <laughs> oh, I can only imagine. Yeah. They might not eat it every time, but it's going to pull it. And you're like, oh, yeah. boy. <laughs> like, wintertime, wintertime is the one time of year where they kind of get off that bite a lot. They start really targeting really, really small bait. But anytime after, like post-spawn, all the way up until wintertime, have a, if you're fishing piles, you have to have a glide bait on. It's, yeah. yeah. If, if they're biting it that day, you want to be throwing it. Because sure. you're going to get the biggest fish off of each pile, hopefully. Yeah. Exactly. Or one of them that helps you in the tournament. Yeah. So, all right. Anything else on the boss you want to touch before we move on to the yeah. eco? I think we're good. Ready to move on to the eco? Yes, sir. All right. So the eco is uh, a bait that we came out with this January. Small little bait, six and a quarter inches long, um, weighs an ounce and three quarter. So small little guy. Uh, it's a little bit faster sink than all of our other baits. Um, and that's just, it's basically the thing with this bait is we tried to make it so that we could make, we could make them at a rate that, uh, so sorry, the, uh, guys are, guys are talking out there. Uh, uh, so yeah, six and a quarter inches long, a little bit faster sink, perfect beginner style swim bait. Um, it comes in at $95. So it's a lot cheaper of a bait. Like the darter, which is 235 this thing comes in at 95 bucks. The paint on this thing is crazy durable. Like we figured out a process to be able to bake the paint actually into the bait itself. Was um, this one I think I saw like pictures of like chipping at it and stuff? Oh, yeah, we've hit really it with good. a pair of metal side yeah. dogs. We've ran it over with trucks, like trying <laughs> to get these things beat up. And the paint, like you literally have to chip resin away in order to make the bait look. That's like, incredible. Not what it is right now. So – we designed it around efficiency, trying to figure out how to bring the most like most value for a bait possible to whether you're a beginner guy, advanced guy, tournament guy, because it's great tournament size. Uh, whatever skill range you're at, this bait's going to have its spot in your arsenal, basically. And again, trying to bring it to you super, super, super durable bait at a more affordable price tag. So this is a little bit choppier style of a bait. As you can see, it's got that yeah. tight angle to it or it's got that close to 90 degree angle to it. It's just, it's, it's that perfect size for getting a ton of bites. And this bait really, really excels in the fall. Um, a lot of guys are catching a lot of fish on it this spring. I've gotten a lot of pictures of really big fish caught in this thing and they don't even know what's coming. They haven't thrown it in the fall yet. When they get targeting those smaller thread fins, this bait's insane. Oh boy. And that's because you've been able to play around with it for a while. So you already, oh, yeah. know, the, you already know the power of it. Oh, yeah. We've had it for a while. <laughs> <laughs> Man, yeah. that's so, incredible. Be forewarned, guys. This bait in the fall is insane. Oh, man. Here goes my wallet now. Thanks. <laughs> <laughs> so, we, we no, no, you're fine. For the, for the given situation. And, like, there's we're always coming up on new situations where it's like, we want that bait for that particular instance. And then once we build it for that instance, we're able to find it for a lot side of uses outside of those yeah. little niches. So, yeah, yeah I, I like baits that are versatile. So that's, that's good to know. Mm -hmm. So anything else on the eco you want to touch on before we ask you a few more questions before we wrap up? I think we're good on the eco. Um, yeah, the, it's just, it's, it's a bike getter. It's going to start being available for retailers. We're going to kind of make it available for retailers around uh, ICAST, 
Uh, right now, we're just kind of doing drop exclusives. Uh, we'll have one. I think it's next Tuesday or something, whatever date that is. So mark when... your calendars and go to the yeah. Clutch Swim Bait website and make yep. sure you order some. It's on the 21st. If this comes out after the 21st, sorry. It'll actually be uh, out tomorrow morning, <laughs> so people will hear gotcha. it before the 21st so that's exciting you, do you guys normally do drops on tuesdays i'm assuming then uh, you just, kinda, did, just did one three days ago too right yeah we, we kind of lean towards either tuesdays or thursdays uh and we kind of stick around that 4 30 mark um it just it seems to what's what has been that's worked best for us so try, try to get it so that people are off or and that's 4 30 central time uh yeah. it's like 5 30 5 30 eastern or 3 30 pacific right yeah, we, we try to make it in a time where it's not like you've got a bunch of family time going on. Like if it's at the very end of work, you just as you step out of the office in the car or something, like try to make it as the most accessible time that guys possible. But, but there's there's no time that works for everyone. So I apologize for that. Yeah, it is what it is, right? So, yeah. all right. So as we jump along here, just a couple more questions mm -hmm. for you. But my question is, you know, there's all these elaborate paint schemes out there for all yep. these different swim baits. I want to know if you had to choose two colors of each bait, and it could be the same color for each one. Why would you recommend these two color patterns, and when would you throw them? Gotcha. Okay. So in my mind, like, I keep this super, super simple. Uh, in my mind, there, and this, this is all the baits. There's bone. You have to have a bone. Like, so... A lot of people think like, okay, just bare white like that. It's not super natural, but you put this thing in the water and it almost glows in the water basically. Um, and it always been one of my top producing colors for a long time. And I never quite understood it until I saw it on Lake of the Ozarks one day and it just like popped in my mind. Uh, so there's a bunch of gizzard chat up shallow, just kind of Roman bluff ends. And, uh, I saw every, every once in a while, I'd see one that just really stood out to me. And I was like, what's up with that one? And I noticed like it was always a little bit slower, a little bit further behind. And it was it was a dying gizzard shad. And when gizzard shad die and really all bait, all bait fish in general, any fish in general, as they start to die, they start to get pale white. Like they yeah. lose all their pigment in their sides, especially as they're getting sick and everything. And they glow in the water like they're, they literally stand out. And I think that's what a bone glide bait really emulates well is just a dying bait fish up there just on its last leg, just kind of sweeping back and forth, just not looking super well. So bone is my number one go-to color. Uh, I'll throw it all the way up until three and a half, four foot of water or visibility. Um, a lot cleaner water than a lot of people probably would think of to get away to get away with it. Um, but then once we kind of start getting beyond that, uh, my favorite color is uh, – like this kind of purple color. As you can see, there's a little bit of gold in there. A little I bit mean, it's a gizzard color. shed perfectly. Yep. yep. And I mean, purple uh, color like this, which is nat shad, like any of those is good. So basically I'm looking for something natural and I'm looking for something uh, bare bone. And I, I don't get in too much into the really super elaborate paint schemes. Like it seems like the swim bait world nowadays is kind of like, I made the joke. It's, it's kind of turning into the loofah wars, uh, the bathroom loofahs that everyone has. Yeah, like pink, green, all, all the, oh, yeah. blue, dark blue, purple, lilac. Yeah. Yeah. All, oh, all the all the custom painters are buying a bunch of those bathroom loofahs out there and putting them on embroidery hoops and putting them over baits. And it's who can use a loofah the best. And I don't really get into that too much because it, it's it's a very very inefficient process. Seems like no matter which way we go about it, it's it's not super efficient. And look, the, the biggest gripe with custom made hand or custom uh, handmade swim baits is like they you you can't get them. Um, you've got to operate off drops, or you've got like, and the bait maker will only do like three four drops a year. And like you throw that bait, you lose it, and you're like, man, I was relying on that for that tournament next week. Like, wh what am I supposed to do now? Like. He's got another drop coming up in three months and I may not even get one. So like availability is the biggest issue with swim baits. Um, and we try not to do that. Like we, we try to make our baits more readily available where if you want a bait, you can get one. Uh, that's really what we focus on. And when, when we focus on that, we can't really do super, super elaborate paint schemes. I want to focus on a paint scheme that is going to catch a bass first and a fisherman second not just fishermen first and try to make the most charismatic looking swim bait possible. Yeah. 
I'm sure I'm going to catch a lot of heat for that. I probably didn't make any friends say that. Oh, I mean, that's, that's fine. Funny. Everyone, everyone's allowed to have their own opinion. Me personally, I want like bone, maybe something that's got like some chartreuse and white on it for like a bright, sunny day. Yes, yeah, smallies. And then I'm looking. I actually have like a little glide bait box over here. Then something that we have a lot of trout in our water as well, mm -hmm. and a lot of gizzard shad colors and trout patterns will kind of work the same because oh, yeah. that pink hue right so like yep. something that's translucent kind of gizzard shaddy works really good up here where i'm at yeah so those are like the three color patterns that i tend to go with everyone's like you need perch you need bluegill i'm like no you you really don't my like bluegills are white a lot of the times when yeah up here so it's like a white bait's gonna emulate a bluegill just fine yeah so. I, I always i always go back i don't know if you've watched the bass university at all in the past like they, they've been a huge thing about or I, I i subscribed to it way back when uh and i remember one thing jo john cruz had one thing where he kind of broke down about what matters to make a fish bite and uh in his list color was all the way at the bottom of like yeah. seven different attributes color was last place and uh the more i thought about it the more i fished the more i kind of realized like that's for the most part, it's pretty true. Like, yeah. well, I feel like big companies put colors out there to make us buy them, right? Yeah. Like, because they want to make more profit. And when I pull up, when I open up my box and I go in, I'm like, well, I'm just going to grab a green pumpkin worm because they're yeah. a green pumpkin. So, like, now, now don't get me wrong. There's sometimes where like that mo motor oil chartreuse tail, like that's the color. But like yeah. those times are fairly rare. Where most of the time, just the kind of green pumpkin. Yeah. yeah, I love it. So. We'll kind of move on there and I'll, we'll wrap it up. I just want to know like an entry level and an expert level, like swim bait enthusiast setup from like rod, reel, line setup, and something that can kind of cover the entire broad spectrum. I know there's yeah. not a one rod that does everything well, but something in the middle, because I'm sure you've tested just about every rod on the market, right? In real. So like, I just want to know, like, if there's a recommended setup for entry level swim bait fishermen, and then what you would recommend more of an expert glide bait fisherman yeah. to use to fish these baits. Uh, so, uh, do they have Dobbins available at? Okay. They do. Gotcha. So, uh, Dobbins Fury 806 SB is the rod I recommend guys start out with. Like, that's the best beginner level swim bait rod. Um, like now that being said the alpha angler wide glide that's that's my baby i've got three of them I, that is in my opinion the best swim bait rod out there like it's it's insane like it but everything about that rod is great but yeah the dobbins fury 806 sb is the best beginner swim bait rod it's around that 100 120 dollar range kind of depending when you're sharp shopping the memorial day sales and stuff like that uh so it's kind of in there um so that's that's that uh in terms of real so the high end i'm gonna start out with high end uh daiwa tatula 300 um the 300 size reel that's that's in my mind the best swim bait reel um now you gotta you gotta think about spool size here spool size makes a big difference so the bigger the spool the more power you're gonna have so think of it like an old school or just a, like a mountain bike the lower your gear the more power you're going to have. So like a 6.3 to 7.3 to 1 with a spool that's that big, like every turn, so like if it's a 6.3 to 1, that spool is spinning 6.3 times per one revolution. Well, if your spool is that big, that's going to be a lot more line pickup than a spool that's that big. So like a 100, 150 size uh, spool. So bigger spool, more power, more inches per turn. So like a 6.3 to 1 on a 300 size is going to start acting more like a 7.3 to 1 or an 8 to 1 on a 100 to 150 size. So back to that Dobbins Fury 806 SB uh, rod. So really any reel in that 100, 150 size spool is going to be fine to start with. You're probably going to get overpowered by some fish, but I wouldn't go with a 6.3 to 1 there, I'd bump it up to a 7.3 to 1 to an 8 to 1 on the smaller reel. So that way you've got the inches per turn of a bigger reel. That way you can work the bait, you can get choppy with it, and you can still really control it. I just feel like a lot of people think big swim baits, they think 5, 6 to 1 or 5, 4 to 1 speed reel, and you just don't have that speed to really work the bait like it kind of should be. Um, 
and if you get a big fish on and it kind of makes a run towards you, you're sitting there trying to play catch up and it's, it's really, really hard. No so, good. Yeah. It's Little always bit. easier to slow down with a faster reel than it is to speed up yep. with a slow reel. Yeah. But yeah, I think for eight, Dobbins for 806 SB, uh, Daiwa Tattoo 150 and a 7.3 to 1 high end combo, uh, the Alpha Angler Wide Glide with a Daiwa Tattoo 300 and a 6.3 to 1. That's now, have you ever used like the Tranks as well, like a Shimano Tranks? I've I've never been a big Shimano guy. I, I love my Daiwas. Uh, Fair enough. It, it seems like there's two camps there's Shimanos and there's yeah. Daiwa people, and I've, I've always been on the Daiwa side. Uh, but I know a lot like. of, yeah, a, a lot of people really like the Tranks. Uh, if you like it, roll with it. Uh, yeah. It's whatever you're going to have the most confidence in. Now, in terms of line, 20 pound mono, I throw the big game almost all the time, whether that's on the cheap combo or the expensive combo. It's what, six bucks for 300 yards? It's If not more. If yeah. You, yeah. I think they used to sell it at Walmart for like the 600 yard spools for like $8.99 or something yeah. ridiculous. That's yeah. that's the stuff. You like that stretch, stretch yeah. as a mile? It's great. So beautiful. So Josh, before I let you go here, is there anything else you want to touch on that you think would be important that we might have missed? Oh, uh, should be good. Um, I'll tease it this way. We should have one more bait released this year. It's unlike anything else that's out on the market. Oh boy. Um, <laughs> it's there's yeah, there, there's not too many teasers out there of that right now. We've kind of kept it really close to the vest, but it's it's completely different than anything else that's out there. And I'm, well, I'm excited for you guys to see it. Well, for those who have tuned in at this 46 minute mark, big news, right? Teaser <laughs> coming, like unprecedented news here on the Lure Lab. So we appreciate that, Josh. And hopefully it's a good drop. We can't wait to see the new bait that comes out. And uh, thanks for taking the time from yeah. the busy bait building schedule to hop on here. And uh, no I hope you get out soon and go catch some big bass and we'll chat. Me too. All right, man. It'll be fun. <laughs> yeah, thank you so much, and you have a good day now. You too. We'll see. Thanks. You. Yep, bye now. All right, everyone. Well, what an episode that was, diving into Clutch Swim Bait Company, talking about the four glide baits that they have on the market, plus a bluegill bait, and you have to go search on that website to find it. But, um, yeah, that was awesome, talking about the shallow glide bait bite. I know we didn't dive into that all too much, but I think all these baits will do it and serve a purpose based on – what you're looking for and how to target and when you're glide bait fishing you're just looking for that trophy big bite most of the time or if you want to grab the eco and just catch numbers on any given day that would be a good process as well thank you josh for joining us here on the lure lab today greatly appreciate it and if you're new here on youtube and you're tuned in please hit that subscribe button if you made it this far leave a comment down below if you've used a clutch glide bait or if there's any glide baits that you like to use on the market i look forward to seeing those and once again if you're on a podcast platform and your favorite one they allow you to leave a review please do so and stay tuned for next week's episode we will see you then mm -hmm.